Good morning. The uh, hearing of the uh, Committee of Various Affairs will come to order. Sergeant Luther, thank you for being here. Thank you for your service. And I know it's uh, not easy to talk about your personal situation, but we do appreciate it. You have time before the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and help my fellow soldiers and veterans by telling my story. In 2007, while serving in Iraq, Sergeant Chuck Luther was severely wounded by mortar fire. The blow to his head damaged his vision and hearing. Luther had served a dozen years and won 22 honors for his performance. When he went to the aid station at Camp Taji, doctors pressed him to sign documents saying his blindness was caused by a pre-existing condition, personality disorder. If he signed, he would never get disability benefits or long-term medical care. When he refused, Luther was placed in a storage closet and held there for over a month under enforced sleep deprivation until finally he signed the documents. After Luther's story was published in the nation, Congress announced an investigation. In September, they called on Luther to detail his treatment. I was assaulted, held down, and had my pants ripped from my left thigh and given an injection of something that put me to sleep. When I awoke, I was strapped down to a combat litter and had a black eye and cuts on my wrist from the zip ties. I was under guard 24-7. I was constantly called a piece of crap, a faker, and other derogatory things. They kept the lights on and played all sorts of music from rap to heavy metal very loud all night. These are some of the tactics that we would use on insurgents that we captured to break them to get information or confessions. I went through this for four weeks and the HHC commander told me to sign this discharge and that if I didn't, they would keep me there for six more months and they kicked me out when we got back to Fort Hood anyway. I said I didn't have a personality disorder and he told me that if I signed the paperwork that I would get back home and get help and I would have all my benefits. After the endless nights of sleep deprivation, harassment and abuse, I finally signed just to get out of there. I was broken. Sergeant Luther, uh, what you described in the month or so after when they were asked you to sign this, uh, these papers can only be described as torture uh, as I listened to it. I mean, did you take any legal action against the Army for torturing you? Uh, no, sir. Um, at the time, my TDS attorney told me just go ahead and sign it or I would stay there six months. But Sergeant Luther's uh, report of what I call torture, could that happen in the Army? And, uh, and was it ever investigated? And did anybody ever, uh, did, did the people who were accused of doing this ever, uh, there were pictures of the thing, there, are, uh, there seems to be witnesses. Was that ever investigated? Uh, Mr. Chairman, to my knowledge, it, it was not. It first came out in um, the media, uh, it was referred to Fort Hood, and I will have to follow up with them to find you, out <laughs> if there was any investigation. Man, if I were you, I, uh, I would have jumped. We, we can't let that happen in the Army, and if it's true, somebody's got to be punished, and if it's not true, that's got to be known too. Yes, Mr. Some Chair. people are making these charges in public session here where they're, they're uh, sworn to, uh, to tell the truth. They've been in the newspaper, and Surely you'd be concerned if the Army was accused of torturing its own soldiers, wouldn't you? These discharges are being used for some of the most absurd things, of course, with him, uh, with blindness, uh, with John Town here three years ago after he was wounded by uh, the rocket and won the Purple Heart. They said he wasn't wounded, that his deafness came from personality disorder. I, I think about Sergeant Jose Rivera, his arms and legs were punctured by grenade shrapnel. Uh, they said those shrapnel wounds were caused by personality disorder. Uh, sa sa sailor Samantha Spitz, uh, her pelvis and two bones in her ankle were fractured. They said that her fractured pelvis was caused by personality disorder. 
And uh, in a case that, that really touched me, I think of specialist Bonnie Moore, she developed an inflamed uterus during service. Uh, they said her profuse vaginal bleeding was caused by personality disorder. Uh, civilian doctors thought it was something a little more severe. Uh, she went to a hospital uh, in Germany where they removed her uterus and appendix, but after being given that personality disorder discharge and denied all benefits, she and her teenage daughter became homeless. Uh, she called me just because she was concerned that at the homeless shelter, her daughter would be raped. It's usually uh, in the performance of duties that problems come to light uh, and then can be more thoroughly evaluated by medical personnel after they've been accessioned. After they get clumps of uh, sharp shrapnel in their leg, then you'll figure out they have a personality disorder. You know, you're not giving me a lot of confidence that you know what the hell you're doing. Mr. Kors wrote about that this is sort of on purpose and this is, uh, this is designed to save money. You haven't given me any reason not to accept that conclusion. We are notifying every veteran who separated since 9-11, who had been a, a separation characterized as um, personality disorder, who had previously deployed, uh, to make sure that they have access. We're just in initial stages of it, and uh, well, now your initial stages. <laughs> you started. You said you you're notifying everybody, but so how many have you yes, notified? We will notify everybody. But how many have you notified now? We have notified no one. No one. Sir, the report came in. I mean, look, process look, 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 you led me, you led me to believe, and if uh, I could ask the recorder to read right your words were, that you already notified everybody. Anybody know I just have that, have that sense? I mean, that's what I heard, that you have notified everybody. Now you're saying you haven't even started the notification process. Which, so you haven't started it? No, sir. When will you do this? We're in the process of... of <laughs> How long is that process stuck? Hey, since you're making me ask these stupid questions, because you're, 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 you know, I don't know whether you go to school to learn this or it's part of your personality disorder, but I have to ask what your, what your words mean. We're supposed to be talking English to each other. You're, we're yes, trying sir. to get some, and, and, and you're not helping me very much, and it sounds to me you don't want to help. I mean, you've made some pretty um, strong statements that are not supported by what I have. A and I I'm, I'm disadvantaged also because, number one, I'm disadvantaged out of respect. I respect you. I respect your privacy. I also um, would say this. I would never, even when I was chairman of whatever subcommittee or a full committee, ever put a reporter on a panel to testify. I would never do that. But I think it's pretty shocking that you would even come here and, and provide testimony with regard to someone's medical condition. You're not a doctor. If you're a doctor, they'd knock you right upside the head for that. I'm not gonna do this. I can't, my integrity as a gentleman will not permit me to do this. Dr. Rowe, will you take this seat? I will not participate in this. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not going to do it. This is wrong. This is wrong. I wished I didn't have this story to tell. I want to say that it has been held just to get my mind somewhat back on track and to exist. I was taught for years in the Army the definition of integrity, honor, respect, and selfless service, all of which I gave to the Army, but none was given back to me.